we need our legislatures to leave this incentive alone. And the way to do that, too, is to let them know they have a job because of us. My name is Mark Adler. I'm the director of the Michigan Production Alliance. <laughs> We're supported here today by members of the production community. Thank you all for coming. The Teamsters, IACI, which is the International Alliance of Theatrical and Stage Employees, <laughs> and the Screen Actors Guild. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you for listening to this message. It's a simple one. We live in Michigan, and we want to continue to work in Michigan. We need to teach some of our senators, Senator Cassis is one that I heard yesterday, Little Film 101 will be going on in my message for you today. She wants to cap it and keep it. No! No! It would simply kill the investment. Instead of caps, one idea is, as you mentioned and other speakers before us have mentioned, maybe get rid of a 30% um, incentive favoring out-of-state crew members. Why should we give that away? Right. Let's keep it all here. We're training crews right now. We've got people that can do this. Senator Cassis and other opponents need to get a clue that Michigan jobs are created and maintained through the state because of these bills. So today, my role is to implore legislators to consider small businesses like ours when they're discussing this legislation and building legislation like the film credit and that considering its continued existence. Thank you. You're hearing a lot about Southeast Michigan, but again, West Michigan Film and Video Alliance is large and they are growing and they're showing us their numbers here today. And I want to bring to this stage from West Michigan Film and Video Alliance also a camera uh, crane operator, Mr. Ed DeYoung. Thanks very much. I uh, wanted to represent our, our West Michigan contingent here. I'm one of the co-founders of the West Michigan Film Video Alliance. started in 2005. It has several hundred members now. Um, a variety of people in a variety of uh, skills uh, in the film and video industry. It's been very exciting to see Genesis Code invade Grand Rapids. Um, there aren't very many West Michigan people here because there are probably three or four dozen uh, West Michigan folks working on that film out of a crew of nearly a hundred. Um, they uh, swarmed the campus at Calvin College the last uh, couple of weeks and uh, they are now uh, set up in a uh, cover set and uh, temporary sound stage that was built inside um, a shuttered um, automobile uh, plant on the west side, uh, northwest side of, of town. Um, a small example of um, many uh, buildings that could be reused and repurposed that are standing empty now that uh, would work very well to be retrofitted as, uh, as sound stages, uh, just on a small scale. Um, I um, have a, uh, an anecdote that I think might be helpful um, for our senators and legislator, legislators. Um, my overall message would be leave the incentives alone. Give them a chance to work. They were passed on April 7, 2008. That's, uh, that's hardly enough time to begin to give the thing traction. Uh, it's going to take uh, another year before we see uh, a real explosion, I think, uh, on, the, on the front of sound stages, uh, many of which are, are in, in the works. There's a groundbreaking happening in Allen Park in a couple of weeks. Um, my anecdote is a, a director, writer-director from Hollywood, North Hollywood, that contacted me three months ago, uh, committed to making his film in, in Michigan, actually in Grand Rapids. For some reason, he wanted that size city to make his movie in. Uh, he contacted me and said, um, how, much, uh, how many people am I going to find to work on my movie in West Michigan? I said, a lot more than you might think. I was able to plug him in to lighting people, to casting people, to production people, to coordinators. Um, I was, uh, was going to work on the uh, location scouting, the location managing for him. 
This film hasn't started yet. He's got cold feet because of what he's hearing in this building behind us, the rumblings of a cap, of a change, of something. And if you think about it, if you have a multi-million dollar project and there's some threat of part of the financing falling through, would you continue with it? Would you go forward with it? No, if you're a smart businessman, you would wait until you were sure. Um, so the talk, even the talk of any kind of a cap or adjustment or change in the, in the incentive program as it currently stands is tremendously damaging to the potential projects that could be heading this way. It delays things. And when it comes to dealing with the seasons in Michigan, I don't think that's me. When it comes to dealing with seasons in Michigan, um, this, this gentleman needed to shoot um, in, uh, in the summer. He needed uh, a couple hundred middle school kids as extras in his movie. He couldn't shoot in the summer. Now he's kind of stuck. He may very well have to wait until 2010. And all of this delay was due to uncertainty over whether incentives were going to hold in Michigan or not. So the message again is, legislators, please leave the incentives alone. Give them a chance to work. It's going to blow your mind. Thank you. They have no idea, no way of tracking all of the positive economics that have resulted from the incentives. And they will tell you this. We can't track it. We don't know. Also, there's a huge fear factor going on here where people, again, like David Zinn, will tell you, oh, we're going to have to pay $148 million back to producers just for 2008 alone. Well, that's ridiculous. I mean, they only brought in $125 million. So how could we possibly owe $148 million? But nobody's doing the math, apparently. So I urge you to really listen carefully to what people are saying to complain about this thing and set them straight. Because it's not that complicated. It is, this incentive has been called the most successful incentive in the history of Michigan. I mean, <laughs> how can they argue with it? So I think we have to also, I want to say one other thing about ideology. I think there is at play here some folks who would rather play off on their own agendas than what is best for the state and the people of Michigan. And, you know, we could all name names here. I'm going to give you one. We already said Nancy to death. Justin Amash. This is a guy from our side of the state. He is committed to no incentives. The idea being that if we get rid of all incentive programs, then we can get rid of the Michigan business tax. We won't have to tax our businesses to pay incentives. Therefore, get rid of all incentives. Now, this is a gentleman to whom there is no compromise. And I begin to think, you know, this is something that we have to take seriously, not just as members of a film community, but as members of an American society where compromise and discussion and thoughtful, reasonable politics is, I would hope, the name of the game. So I'm, I guess, you know, I'm going to just take my moment here, and I hope this is appropriate, to just say, please, please, please talk to your legislators and let them know that you hold them accountable for you as well as whatever ideologies they were elected to represent. We are part of this state. We are residents, and every vote they make affects us too. So I guess on that note, I would just say, again, we have to remember, it's been called the most positive incentive ever in the state of Michigan. Let's not let it die. Thanks. <laughs>